I'm talking about Josef Beuys and Josef Sassoon Sema, one must not forget that bigger scope. In my interpretation, this overall theme is how the guest, and that is how Sema calls himself, whenever you read the text of him about the guest, it's him, how this guest looks at the context of his exile and interacts with it. He adapts, but he also criticizes, and by his acts, he reminds the host, and that is the Dutch art world, of aspects that are mostly invisible and unspoken of. I will come back to this at the end of this paper. Since the 1980s, Boyce has been a constant reference point for Sassoon Sema, but times have changed. Not only has the work of Sema changed, the common interpretations of the work of Boyce have shifted, and thirdly, and probably most important, the whole idea of what an artwork is has altered dramatically. So, both changing concepts of art and shifting perspectives must be taken into account. And in, the, in conclusion, I will link my interpretation to five parts of this exhibition. From an art historical point of view, Josef Beuys is an artist who emerged in the 1960s into a deep crisis within Western art. Art had become something for specialists. It was commonly seen as a development towards reduction of artistic means. So people painted figuratively, then they painted abstractly, and then they just you know, made a plain white painting on one side and individual expression on the other. So somebody who was painting just a black painting said, this is very individual. It's just my piece of art. This strange dialectic process is core to understanding Western art. What was reduced was the age-old system of referencing, where every work of art points to another, and by this, a genealogy is created. And Joseph Sema, and that is very important for the way he works, does something different, because he is constantly referring to things. It always means something. The availability of photography dramatically increased possibilities as artists from New York knew what was going on in Paris and vice versa, even if they had not seen it live. But the funny thing is then, instead of acknowledging the exchange over Rhine and Atlantic Ocean, the process went to another direction, focusing on the autonomous individual oeuvre of the artists. Here you see the Gau Balaman from Boys. Following after Povera, and most of all, French Nouveau Realism, that had a strong impact on artists in the Rhineland, a new sculpture developed. Instead of traditional materials, bronze, stone, or wood, everything could become sculpture. Boyce is one of the artists experimenting with this. This process opened up enormous possibilities for art. But on the other hand, the question, what is art and why, became less easy to answer. And it all ended when everything the artist produced could become art, because the artist produced it. Objects were combined, and instead of the old-fashioned question about form, new narratives developed. Within this framework, Boys holds a very special position. First of all, his art was not anti-art, but it was old-fashioned with new means. It was about esoteric content. Instead of acknowledging its anthroposophist sources and enabling viewers to understand his work from that background, he focused on what he called the spiritual future. In this spiritual future, so his claim, his work will be understood. 
It is as simple as this. And it demonstrates the deep esotericism of this artist. His work points towards salvation. Most people understood that in a political sense, as an overcoming of capitalism, but Boyce meant it on a spiritual level. So in the case of this famous object, Boyce later pointed out that for him, three levels of the human being were embodied in it. Thought, feeling, and willpower. It was therefore not a matter of formal experiments of working with residual materials as we know it from Nouveau Realisme. The terminology, the three words, point very directly to Boyce's involvement with Rudolf Steiner. So in this particular case, highly individual meant highly esoteric. Boyce's early work is full of motives that can be directly traced back to texts by Rudolf Steiner. And this raises, of course, the question, who could see it? Who understood it? My guess is hardly anyone. Here you see one of the pages from Boyce's sketchbook from 1957 to 61, titled, On behalf of James Joyce, Joseph Boyce extends Ulysses by six more chapters. That was presented in a fantastic exhibition in Darmstadt last year. It showed that this German esoteric artist read James Joyce. And then after reading that, he transposed the poetic concept that the stream of consciousness can become literature, and that is the theme of Ulysses. He transposed that into visual art. So everything he did and touched could become art. From this follows a meandering output of mostly visual ideas and puns full of esoteric references and while their actual content was not clear, after all, it's an unedited stream, it was obviously anti-modernist and intended to be spiritual because that was what he was always talking about. That served the old tradition that there is a genuine German romantic approach to art and that the economic situation of the Bundesrepublik in the late 1960s where people were actually willing to pay enormous amounts of money for this kind of art. And the Deutsche Bank was one of the organizations at that point willing to pay this enormous amount of money. The, this process climaxed in 1979 when Beuys was the first German artist to receive a solo exhibition at the Guggenheim in New York. To understand the fundamental shift that took place, you should have a look at this photograph showing the artist in his Kleve studio. To the right, you see the memorial for Büderich, and this work seems to be the center also of the photograph. But now imagine everything lying around becoming art. So the Grau Bodemann, oh, the other one, mm. yes, there it is, in the back of the studio, some object lying around became art. It can be traced back in studio photos until the around 1952, 1953, but when it actually became an artwork, we do not know, I think around 1962. Now one can easily imagine German art history with Beuys as one of his <coughs> main exponents. That's what Linda was referring to. From the 1970s <coughs> on, he was seen as the archetypal artist, mostly because of his anti-establishment attitude. And that fitted simple notions of avant-garde. And from an Anglo-Saxon or a French perspective, he seemed to be a genuine German artist in the Romantic tradition, making art, talking about something spiritual. But looking from South America, he was one of the artists in the West 
from the 1970s working with junk. So for the sake of argument, I suggest focusing out instead of focusing in. But looking from South America still involves a Christian perspective. That is, we look at something knowing that we see something different. And this is exactly where Sassoon Seymour's critique sets in. While the art world considers itself to be superior, it's deeply Christian. And as the art world denies its Christian core, it barely understands Seymour's criticism. So that's the, uh, the principal problem we're talking about. Christianity is based on the beautiful idea of the incarnation of God. Those who believe know that Christ is the Son of God. For the Christian visual tradition, this has very far-reaching implications. In other monotheistic religions, the unimaginable is explicitly banned from imagery. And within Christian tradition, you can make it visible with a half-naked man. This is as simple as it is fundamental. In the Christian realm, art is the place for the unimaginable. From this follows an equally simple and fundamental <coughs> distinction when it comes to viewers of Christian art. The Christian knows that what he sees is much more than what he sees. He sees something hanging from a cross. It's God. Wow. So if in the work of Joseph Boyce, fat refers to spiritual energy, this can only work against a background willing to accept that what you know and believe is not what you see. Any other tradition in, a, in Europe, and in Europe that would be the Jewish one, cannot and will not see more. There is a form of Christian perception that has survived all secularization and sees the transcendent in the mundane. To put it bluntly, without that self-perception, most museums of modern art would be empty. Enter Martin Luther, who was the main topic of Sassoon Seymour's Collateral Damage II in 2017. Luther's contribution to art, and one of the reasons that museums of modern art flourish primarily in Protestant countries, relates to the emphasis on reading. Images are ambiguous. They can mean anything. And only through reading do they acquire a precise content. And with that, images lost their magic and became simple objects. And conversely, any object could be viewed, provided it was properly understood. Only then could one be sure that the viewer understood its moral meaning. So we're talking about two intertwined mechanisms. First. Regardless of their iconoclasm, Protestants held to the core Christian idea of the Incarnation and thus that transcendence can become visible. <coughs> Second, the invisible content of what is visible is held in check by canonical texts. There are people you have to read to understand boys. And here it becomes interesting for the few art historians here, as there is no modern artist where the iconography and symbolism has been so deeply researched as Joseph Boyce. Every visual or textual clue or trailer he gave has been interpreted endlessly. So there is something like the Joseph Boyce universe. And in this case of the design for the Auschwitz Memorial, it has been convincingly argued that the form in the foreground is linked to his so-called dwarf monument. A Zwergen, thank I. And in this universe, dwarfs are actually creatures that know the powers of nature and crystals, and they are digging in the mountains for beams of energy. Boyce planned his Auschwitz monument 
different from this photograph that only shows the sculpture and one of the two forms, thoughts to frame the railroad. So you have the boys universe and in this everything can have meaning and refer to the transcendence as long as the, I would call them, guardians of the threshold approve. And while in Rudolf Steiner's thoughts, these guardians <clears throat> were barriers to reach and overcome in search for spiritual enlightenment and karma, in our mundane <clears throat> art world, they are the art historians claiming to guard the flame, the priests, or should we call them the scholastics, who know all the texts about Joseph Beuys. We can easily criticize these mechanisms that they apply for contemporary art as a system. And Sassoon Sima, coming from a Jewish background, gives another perspective. But before we go there, we should think a moment about the dwarfs and Auschwitz. Beuys himself wrote that in this particular place in Poland, something terrible had happened there. And as Ron Mannheim has showed, Boy's interpretation of Auschwitz was never based on any historical knowledge, but culminated in his utterly absurd idea that people in contemporary capitalist countries were worse off than the prisoners of the extermination camps. And Mannheim argues convincingly that boys never suffered from any feeling of guilt, but rather stayed completely unempathetic towards what had happened. Since the 1980s, Sassoon Sema pointed to iconographical aspects in boys' works that have meaning from his point of view. The first is the hair. We we're already talking about it, and the meat over there came from a hair. Second, the lemon. Third, fat. Fourth, felt. And fifth, the teflin. And he showed convincingly that these aspects can be read and understood from a Jewish perspective and culminate in the simple question, where are the Jews? One example, in Boy's work, the hair is mostly linked to Germanic fertility and he himself gave this interpretation in interviews. But what is intriguing is that while Boyce incorporated living animals into his performances, the hare is always dead. Well, then it must symbolize resurrection, it could be the path of standard Boyce exegesis, leading up to a highly individual iconography with anthroposophical layers. As a symbol, the hare can be traced back to antiquity and over the years, Boyce has added layer by layer by layer by layer of meaning. But there's one layer missing, and that is the hair as a symbol of the Jew. Mm -hmm. Symbol, Sema added this interpretation, and by that adding, he gave, or you could say he added a subversive element to the Boyce universe. The guards, the scholastics who are defending boys, they do not like it, but it is there. And everybody who has heard this story about the hair will never look at a hair in Boyce's work again from without this question. The standard Boyce interpretation then refers to the fact that it cannot be proven that Boyce knew that the hair is a symbol for Jews, that he knew that the Cyprus plays a role in the Feast of Tabernacles that margarine was produced by Jews in his hometown, that felt was made from human hair. But, and we spoke about this a few weeks ago at Spur 25, why then is every other interpretation thinkable, but not the Jewish one? Does not that show that not only were Jews killed, but were even erased from memory? Sema points to a void in knowledge and understanding. In the exhibition downstairs, you will see a series of paintings. They look like abstract works, but they are referring to the shadows of life after disaster. They are based on infrared pictures 
after a bombarding, and what is left of life is no more than a shadow. It refers to battlegrounds, but it also refers to Europe after the war. On the surface of the bloodlands, most traces of life had been erased. From there, boys tried to evoke an esoteric future, whereas Sassoon Sema, and I think that is the main difference, reminds us of what is lost and what has been literally overpainted. He reminds us of a lively Jewish intellectual and artistic tradition, and he invites us to his discover it. So the guest makes us all an offer. Every sign has a direct meaning, and if you want, afterwards, ask him. The artist will explain everyone. I don't know at what point the building is closed, but uh, we'll see. On another level, these paintings show Seymour's principal critique of modern art. Modern painting means erasing all traces of history and tradition are liquidated on behalf of the so-called individual language of the artist. And Sassoon Sema conversely points towards the layers underneath the surface. What has been painted over? Most striking, of course, also downstairs, his work with the Talmud Bavli, where he amends the text with the next layer. For Sassoon Sema, this is also important as the Talmud Bavli became home for exiled Jews. And if Boyce stated Kunst ist Kapital, which has some extra meaning, of course, in the building of Deutsche Bank, Sema reminds us that cultural traditions can <coughs> and should be assessed as capital. Boyce saw art as an investment into a spiritual future, and of course, him signing banknotes turned out to be a fantastic capitalist move. Sassoon Sema stays close to the ground and sees knowledge and the open conversation between different traditions as a starting point. So the book is the home of his tradition, his capital. This is a sign you have seen, and it comes directly out of a work by Joseph Boys. Preparing his installation for the Vienna, uh, Venice Biennale in 1976, Boys showed a cro cross section of the railway, the tram railway in his hometown, Kleve. He took objects from its use, had them cast in bronze, and would call it a monument to the future. Sema links this work to Auschwitz, and by this artistic inf intervention, he reinterprets this famous sculpture and void within the work. It looks like a strange letter, and Sassoon Sema takes its forms and puts it on two horns over there, probably referring to the altar for burned offerings from the Bible. But the visual idea is, of course, that when you look at the cross-section of a railway, you are looking to where it's leading. Here you see the, on the left, the original tram stop that was in Venice in 1976, and the later version, one is in Colomilla in Otolo, that Boys decided to always be presented lying. For Boys, this work was about the direct perception of a pile of material. And there is, of course, extensive literature in its meaning. In Sassoon's Sema's drawings, you will see elements from this installation combined with the imagery of Auschwitz and the Holocaust. <clears throat> By this, he adds footnotes to the work of Boyce. And while the interpretation of Tramstop is mostly very indirectly linked to World War II, it is something with the atmosphere. Sema goes a step further and links it to the biggest atrocity in European history. Not in that it is this depicting this, but the question is if this work has something to say about recent 
German history, as the interpretations say, well, why is it not about the Jews? Joseph Sassoon Sima was a soldier. Likewise, he knows the carnage, and using the meat grinder, <coughs> reacting on voice, he uses very direct imagery. And making that small form, the tefillin, out of ground meat may look like a sacrilege, but the very moment you understand the referencing, its image will haunt you. The prayer box is used at morning prayer, and both the box and the tournament should come from ritually clean animals. But Sassoon Sema is not linking the Holocaust to any kind of offering, thereby lifting it to esoteric heights. But through the symbol, with clear meanings within his tradition, he focuses on the void created through mass murder and perpetuated in modern art. Therefore, it seems to be important then, when working on the German artist, boys, the Baghdad-born Israeli artist living in Amsterdam unveiled his own history. So over the years, more and more details from his own life and experience have emerged. If boys beat around the bush, any artist criticizing this, he or she should act differently, which was, by the way, the topic of collateral damage three, referring to Sassoon Seymar's Baghdad Babylonian background. And by this operation, this work that started from a very strong critical impulse has become more and more personal. It has gained depth, but not in the sense of the autonomous individual visual language, but as a language that can be read step by step. Downstairs, Sima put the hat of his Baghdad grandfather against the famous hat of Joseph Boys here. These men have never met. Could never have met. But in his work, Joseph Sema shows the intellectual and visual depth that can develop when traditions mingle. And the guest is not just accepted or welcome, but even allowed to speak and criticize. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.